and say welcome to everyone. This is the second part uh, on us talking about having an open space for the Red Hook Economics uh, referendum proposal. Um, I'm facilitating, I'm Aposto and Mark is presenting. Also Julio and John are here as part of the uh, research and design group itself uh, that is putting up the proposal. Julio, I can't hear you. Um, there is no sound coming from your, uh, even though you're trying to say something. Yeah. And the proposed ag agenda today is to have, um, I want to ask, every one of the people here uh, what is most exciting everyone from the people who are participating in crafting this referendum proposal uh, what is the most exciting thing for them uh, that this uh, that they see in this proposal just an open question to each one of them and then we can have a q a for the rest of the time open q a uh, this is a two-point agenda uh, plan. Uh, does anyone um, have any objections to that? Did, okay. I don't hear any objections, so we'll go ahead with this, um, this agenda plan. And I, I'll pass it on to Mark if he wants to say some um, introductory words or just start with answering that question, what is most exciting for him in this referendum proposal? <laughs> um, well, thank you. Um, I think what's most exciting to me in the referendum proposal is the uh, constant currency and going live uh, to make the seeds currency uh, truly operational now. Um, that's the thing that it, I believe forms the, the core and the heart of what this proposal is. Um, uh, and my goal for today is to answer questions and to uh, dig into um, a few details, but questions that, uh, that you know of or that the community has. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Um, then we'll go around with everyone, I know that John, Julio, and Stefan participated um, in the R&D group. So passing it on to John. John, what is the most exciting thing in this referendum for you? Well, I'm gonna just uh, really echo uh, what Mark said. Um, I, what I really find exciting is the possibility that uh, we could have uh, real pilot projects um, around the world using seeds as the, the local currency um, supported in a global way with a stable uh, uh, purchasing power so that everybody can trust it. And, you know, I can see uh, the thing that, that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, Terry Mould has been working on it in Essex in the U.S., um, the group that's working in in uh, Portugal, and the group is working in uh, Cabalma in Ecuador. And I don't know where all the other projects are that are close or could be close. Um, this, you know, burgeoning immediately. And with those local groups having enough uh, connectivity, we can have, you know, a market that would include, uh, you know, global global offerings as well. And I, you know, so I can see it really, um, you know, kickstarting, jumpstarting uh, the this, this seeds ecosystem. Thank you. Uh, in a sense, you, you uh, have a feeling that these communities are gonna uh, be more easily ready to adopt uh, if these changes proposed in the referendum are, are okay. Yeah, because, um, you know, without a without a stable value, I mean, that's been a, a huge barrier for uh, local communities. Um, 
how do you have you know a, a stable coin in your local community when the price of, of you know a seed to a dollar is ratcheting up? Um, nobody, you know, in, in Bill Obama, I know they didn't know how to how to think about that, how to promote it. I mean, it was just it was too hard. Okay, thank you, thank you, John. Uh, Stefan, um, what is the most exciting thing for you in this referendum proposal? Well, I have to echo what Mark and uh, John just said, and also having just visited uh, John in uh, Vilcabamba, as well as I've made a point of going around the world physically and seeing different eco villages around the world that want to use seeds. And it becomes very, very clear once you do that, that the number one demand is for a stable uh, seeds currency to go live now as soon as possible. And that's just what you see and hear from people on the ground. And uh, it becomes quite clear when you realize that seeds from the beginning was intended to be a stable coin for uh, regenerational transactions on a daily basis. The sooner we do that, the quicker we will get to our goal of spreading seeds around the world. And when I went to Fairfield, Iowa, which is the, the next really strong possibility for uh, another eco village using seeds, they're really ready to go, if, if, but they're not convinced that they will go now with seeds until seeds has a go live event and can be deployed throughout their community. But they've been going for 10 years. They even had their own uh, coin experiment, which didn't work, but their whole eco village system is going strongly they even have buildings and assets and so forth, and they want to use seeds, but they're waiting. And I'm sure there's other eco villages around the world that are also waiting. In addition, we're also working with and talking with other st strategic alliance partners for seeds that want to use seeds as their basis, one of which is the Sheret group in Israel. And I'm talking to them almost every other day now, and they're also waiting for seeds to establish a go live event, but that's going to be a very big major acceleration for seeds deployment because they already have 50,000 people in Israel in their system and they want to put seeds in as their basis. So anyway, that's a long winded answer to your question. Yeah, thank you for that. That was I, that's what I was looking at um, for and um, yeah julio i guess is not on the call anymore so we can't ask him but from here i want to leave the space a bit open uh and see uh if there are any oh here's julio uh let's just wait for a couple of seconds to see. Julio, um, are you here? Okay. Um, Sorry. Uh, great. We can hear you. Yeah. So, what is the most exciting thing in you about this referendum proposal? Well, for me, it's the idea of releasing seeds into the world I and mean, allowing people to really start using it and, and trust the, the currency is going to be constant. In, in our world. So and that's why, that's what I think the community needs in order to really and, and so we don't have to wait any any further to start using it. Okay, so it's similar. It's about using it right now and uh, deploying it on the ground, basically. There is a little bit of a noise around you, just saying. Uh, so if you can address that anyhow, if you don't, uh, it's it's okay. Uh, so right now, I may, I will um, check if there are any pending questions 
uh, that people want to um, um, ask. I want to um, give thanks to Guy, who did a very curious and interesting post on the forum about his experience about the cryptocurrency that was uh, he was involved in. Uh, also, I see Irina has her hand up, so. Yeah, as you mentioned, the post that um, Guy made, thank you very much. I felt that was very good and it expressed a lot of my concerns. Yes, I didn't have like the language and the experience to put it so <laughs> organized together. So I want to, I want to check with you guys if you received enough information and feedback, if you still have that concern and if, because it's a concern that, that I'm also having and you express it so well, I just want to check with you how you feel about it and if you would like to address it again today. Um, yeah, I did, I did receive some feedback, um, but I think, I think we're still kind of um, to solve like the, the core issue it's like it would it would be nice to go live now, but what value do we put on on the go live? So do we say it's one US dollar as of uh, today, for example? In that case, we're tying ourselves to the US dollar. So then, in, so then you say, well, let's tie it to a basket of goods or something like that. The price of you know a basket of vegetables and a loaf of bread on this date in this country, that's one seed. And then you can, you can argue forever about if that's the right thing. People still say like, um, yeah, but it's arbitrary, what, you know, it's, fi it's finding a stable value, I think. If we continue just with the US dollar, then we're kind of continuing that kind of hegemony of that currency. Although I would personally go with that just because it's easier, you know? I mean, it's it's got to be just good enough rather than perfect, I think. But also, um, we haven't really proved in the marketplace that that seeds is a desirable currency, and I think that's a problem. If we suddenly say it's worth X, it's it's just our, us saying that we haven't actually got to that level with um, with seeds as a market currency. And I think we'll have a lot more credibility if we do actually raise the market value, value organically and then say, okay, it's reached that level. That is a true kind of market indicator of that it's worth that much. Obviously, it's always completely subjective. Um, but I think it would, we would be in a stronger position if it had reached that point. Thank you, Guy. Um... Stephen, do you want to answer that, or Miguel and Stephen, or do you have? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to yeah. say that okay. you don't have to tie it to a fiat currency. All the fiat currencies are all losing uh, purchasing power. You can tie it into a uh, a way of tracking inflation, either global inflation rates, and try to adjust it for the global inflation rate without tying it to a specific currency. So that's one, there are many possible ways of handling this problem, but that is just one. So it's basically to paraphrase you, uh, you tie it to any um, currency and then you have a global uh, indicator for the inflation. Uh, something like this. That no. Correct. You don't tie it to any currency. You just look at the inflation rate and you adjust the value, value. Okay. based on trying to keep that seeds at a, and you can set it to any, any, uh, you can pick the Swiss franc, for example, or whatever, but try to adjust it for inflation and, yeah. and uh, adjust it for inflation and purchasing power. I would, if you're going to tie it to a fiat currency, I would pick one that has the, the best track record for maintaining purchasing power. And I would pick that currency and then adjust it for inflation. That's how I would do it. But there's lots of, there's more experts here than me on, on this subject. Yeah. Okay. Mark? 
Um, I uh, before I, I go, I wanted to uh, make sure that uh, Miguel's um, uh, thoughts got added in as well. I see that he just said my question was answered. So you're okay, Miguel? Okay. Um, so um, I wanted to uh, address this this topic. It's very very uh, exciting, and um, uh, we're to want to know the details of an implementation. Um, and it and it's rational, you know. When we look at the referendum proposal and the way that we wrote it, uh, we left out many details and said that those details will be discussed in the public and transparent forum uh, guided by the Seeds uh, Commons. Um, I have many ideas, as you probably know, um, <laughs> that I think would be good to consider. Uh, and so does everybody else on this call and everybody in the ecosystem. And some people feel more confident and have more, um, you know personal uh, desire to be you know loud and some people are have amazing ideas that uh, have a natural personality that's more quiet um, and we need to um, uh, the seeds Commons need to needs to create space to welcome in these ideas so that we can digest them and come up with uh, a collective uh, implementation style um, so uh, from my perspective um, uh, I'm happy to discuss uh, ideas related to implementation and in spe specifically I think guys uh, dialogue uh, 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 and discussion has been great. I wanted to reply to it and I couldn't get my password to work on the join seeds uh, uh, on the, the forum uh, uh, Renaissance forum. So I have to get that fixed so then I can reply there because you did a great job of uh, providing a, a really good post there. Um, I see John has his hand up and then I, I had a couple thought exercises that I think could be helpful. Thank you, John. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. I just wanted to uh, <clears throat> add in um, on uh, that I really appreciate uh, your, uh, your sharing your experience and posing one of the major problems that uh, any uh, currency is going to have, that it has to be liquid, it has to be tradable for something that can be used as a, you know, in the fiat world. And it has to have this kind of uh, inherent stability that allows local uh, it to operate as a you know in a local market, and um, you know the uh, you know the problem statement of how do we make sure that those two things stay in sync? Because if they get too far out of sync, then you you end up with the kind of thing that happened with Faircoin, or you know you could say what happened with seeds you know on the uh, Uniswap. Um, so uh, you know. And like Mark said, you know, getting into detail on that at this point, we don't know. We but I want to just sort of recognize that we we do see that as one of the, the problems that needs to be solved by the uh, commons going forward. And yeah, we can put forward our own ideas, but that I don't think that's the the, the space for doing that. Other than to say, I've heard a number of different ideas that I've heard that sound reasonable to me. Um, you know, but, so I'm confident that with our intent and our commitment to each other, um, that we can work that, that through and not end up in the same position as Faircoin, which, you know, I did some investigation after I read your, your account and, you know, some of the articles that have been written in the, you know, little research paper that was done. And that's like, yeah, I can see there were some flaws in the social system that caused that to be a problem bigger than just economics of it. And that, you know, that's where I want to put our faith is in the so our, our, our coherence as a community for working those kinds of issues through. Thank you, John. Um, Mark, do you want to share some of the thought exercises? Yeah, um, uh, it's funny. I just got a message from um, uh, a seeds uh, citizen um, on on Telegram, uh, speaking about a friend of his who um, I guess it's it could be in in Central America. I'm not sure where. Who and he sent me a copy, a picture of his seeds um, uh, wallet, 
And he's got, you know, over 100,000 seeds that he purchased, uh, you know, uh, at some point in the past. And he wants to know if uh, Seeds 2.0 is going to get him uh, many, many more seeds because um, uh, he heard that the new seeds were going to be issued at a penny each uh, based upon Seeds 2.0. And when would he get his extra seeds? Um, so this is a perfect example of um, uh, the confusion that exists in the ecosystem. Um, Seeds 2.0 um, was an idea proposal that uh, was discussed in, in, in public uh, with uh, you know, quite a few uh, discussions. Um, and it was never concluded. Um, and the conclusion process is what we're doing now. We uh, have uh, digested many, many ideas um, uh, that uh, can be clearly confusing out there in the world as to what has been uh, approved, what has been agreed to, what hasn't been, and so forth. And the referendum that's up for voting right now is the, uh, con is the condensation. It's the, it's the result of all of those discussions. And what it says is some very clear uh, things, that seeds will be enacted as a constant currency, the seeds commons will be empowered to guide that process, and they set three uh, quarterly um, uh, goals, a uh, December quarterly goal for the seeds commons, a uh, March quarterly go for uh, uh, clarity on the constant currency, and a June quarterly go for uh, turning on the harvest protocol and go live. I think it's really important for the health of the ecosystem uh, for this uh, referendum to be uh, considered carefully and voted. And I very much hope that it passes because by having this proposal pass, we are now as a full community doing something together um, as opposed to talking about a lot of different ideas uh, that, that will confuse people as to what's uh, being implemented and what isn't. And we can uh, uh, really align uh, on the, the process. Um, I do believe also that uh, uh, a lot of amazing things are going to happen when uh, seeds is a constant currency and when uh, seeds is go live, i.e. the harvest protocol. So I wanted to uh, do this thought experiment that ties into uh, that, that topic. So imagine we are in the future and seeds is go live. And let's just for discussion point uh, call, uh, say, a seed is is one dollar, uh, just just uh, so that we can you know have something to work with, and let's suppose, um, or we could call it one token, one one anything, <laughs> but, but just it's a one. Um, and so let's say we're in an idealized uh, uh, village or country, and um, nobody's using seeds yet, nobody's heard of it, and and suddenly it's being used, and we have a farmers market in this village over here that is fully as an aligned community using seeds in a very lovely way. And there's another farmer's market over here doing the same and another one over there. So we have these little pilots, little um, mini uh, uh, econ economies working. And they're all going very well. And by very well, I mean that they are circulating um, uh, seeds uh, to facilitate their local commerce. So imagine you show up on Saturday morning and you go in, and you want to buy a whole bunch of uh, beautiful uh, you know, lettuce and tomatoes, um, you have some seeds in your wallet and you buy them. And during the act of the farmer's market itself, seeds are going to be leaving the wallets of people that are eaters, consumers, and the seeds are going to be going into the wallets of the merchants that were in the farmer's market that day, um, the farmers, or maybe they made candlesticks out of, out of wax or soap or whatever, all of the nice things that they were selling. And so you might worry, well, wait a minute, all of the seeds are going someplace, they're going to the merchants. Um, how do they circulate back in? And let's say they've solved this in their little community because of, of a deep commitment to uh, local and those merchants turn back around and they buy massages from people and they buy uh, uh, plumbing uh, work from other people and goods and services. And in fact, there's a facilitator in that community who says, I will temporarily hold on to seeds that the merchant uh, wants to get back to people so that when the people need the seeds, they can get them from me. And maybe they will, uh, that, that facilitator, we could call them a local bank. Um, and so this local bank acts as a facilitator and the whole circulation does very well. And let's say in this other village nearby, it's close enough that um, it's not that far away. Um, 
And in this other village, it's working just the same, really great. But unfortunately, one day in that second village, there is a landslide and nobody can get to the farmer's market that day. And all of these people still need to eat. And so they all get on their bicycles and they go to the other farmer's market. And fortunately, the other farmer's market had uh, many more uh, vegetables that day. They didn't know there was going to be a landslide, but it worked out just fine. And everybody in both of these villages buys all the food that they need and it's all good. And they go back to their first village and they fix the landslide. Now we have a problem because all the seeds are in the village where they didn't have the landslide and none of the seeds are in the community where they did have the landslide. And so how do we solve this problem? So this is my thought exercise, um, is to recognize that seeds move around the world and seeds behave by agreement and seeds are are um, helped if there's a mechanism by which that they can flow, not only in a local community, but between communities. And let's say in that second community where there's not enough seeds right now, people said, I really want seeds. And they say, I really need them. And they want to get more of them. How do we inject seeds into that second community? This is where the thought exercise comes in. And I want to state it really uh, precisely. When we see that there is a lack of seeds someplace, a new village wants to start up. A new village wants to start up. Or in this situation, there might have been import and export or trade between villages uh, that causes seeds to be in one area and not in another area. When new seeds want, need to be started up, we could take the following approach. Every time you issue a new seed, you put a dollar, if it's the US dollar, you put a dollar in a bank account then everybody knows that if you have a million seeds in the world or 10 million seeds in the world or 100 million seeds in the world, there's that many US dollars sitting in a bank. There's no problem if that's the case, if there's a village that has too many seeds and a village that doesn't have enough seeds, the village that has too many seeds would just exchange them for US dollars because there's this huge bank that held all these US dollars. And the other village that needs them would just go to that bank to get new seeds. And anytime that there's new seeds needed in the world because a brand new village came about, then we could just say, all right, you need a million seeds for your village. Please deposit a million dollars into the bank so that the new million dollars of seeds that are issued have strength. This is the whole model of backing. And when we speak about backing a currency, we're doing it to establish trust, to establish reliability, strength. And what I want to discuss in the thought experiment is where does that trust really come from? Is it from the million C million dollars or the $10 million, or the $100 million sitting in the bank or not? And so I'd like to open up uh, the question to where does the trust come from? And I want, I know we only have 20 minutes left. I want to open the question to where does the trust come from? And I want to open up the question to the bootstrap phase of seeds. The bootstrap phase of seeds was supposed to organically create that trust and organically build um, uh, uh, um, value in some mechanism versus the proposal uh, to just simply instantiate go live. And so that's the, the discussion that I think is really interesting. Um, so I will pause there and I see Guy has his hand up. Um, yeah, well, where does the trust in US dollars come from? It comes from proof of violence. The US dollar, the US dollar is backed by the US government and they're manipulating other economies with, with their army and the CIA and all that. And, and so they're enforcing that people pay taxes uh, denominated in US dollars. For example, in El Salvador, when they had a problem with the currency, they switched to US dollars. So that's one way of enforcing trust is to basically just enforce, you have to use this to pay taxes. And all governments do that. 
And if you don't pay your taxes in the government currency, then you will be put in a small box and you won't be able to get out. So that's a pretty solid way of, of, uh, of doing that. So how, how do you enforce, how, how do you create trust in a voluntary currency? Uh, you need a network effect. So you need people using it, you need a circular economy. You need to get people, the bread maker needs to be able to buy flour and salt and all the things he needs to make bread in that same currency. And if you don't have that, then it, then it can be tricky. Um, and speaking about backing a currency, um, this is what Will Ruddick's doing in Kenya with the grassroots economics. And he's getting money from charities and NGOs. And they're actually like one, one dollar or frank or whatever is backed, is backing the currency that he's issuing into the community. So he's kind of airdropping this, this token in. It's a blockchain token, but it's backed by um, the money the NGOs have given him, that people have donated. Um, so that's another way of doing it. So that, that creates a trust in the currency. But ultimately, as far as I'm concerned, it's a network effect, either whether that's been forced on people or whether there's a, a, other advantages to the currency um, that they want to, they actually want to use it. Yeah, uh, thank, thank you, Guy. Um, I also think that oil is traded in US dollars, so that's a big factor in the price. Uh, I haven't heard that argument a lot, so I want to point it out. Um, are, are you complete, Guy, because your hand is still up? Okay, Mark, do you want to reply to that or just continue? Um, uh, I'd like to continue. Um, yeah. um, Stephen has his hand up, but uh, we haven't heard from Melanie yet, if yeah. that's okay. Okay. Um, Stephen, go ahead. Yeah, so I've studied money quite a bit in my life and career. Um, and first of all, the idea of backing is the idea basically of liquidity pools. And there's lots of different uh, ways of doing liquidity pools. You can even pay somebody fees for putting up the liquidity and they get a, a fee for uh, creating a, a liquidity pool. And, and I think liquidity pools, there is room within the seeds concept to establish some form of liquidity pool to increase the trust. Um, in terms of trust in the US dollar, you have to go back to the 1944 Bretton Woods Agreement, basically establishing the dollar as the, the uh, world trading currency, especially oil and diamonds. But that is now very, very long in the tooth and really in need of uh, major change if it's even possible. But where does the trust in the US dollar come from? In all currencies, it comes from the productivity of the nation from which that currency is established. And it comes not just from taxes, but it comes in how much taxes the population pays consistently to the US government. And as we all know, in South America, for example, it's terrible. Uh, nobody pays any taxes, really. And, and it's all completely corrupt, and you can't count on it. So those currencies don't have a lot of value compared to countries that consistently pay taxes on a regular basis. So the two big things, if you look it up, are those countries that consistently have high productivity and those countries that have high payment uh, year after year after year from their population on taxes. That gives people trust in that currency. Um, trust itself is an interesting concept. It's based on repeated reliable behaviors. So even in your own personal relationships, you start trusting somebody when they consistently repeat the behaviors and keep their word. So that's how you build trust. So in, in terms of seeds, the statements we make need to be kept and honored. And as we do that over time, we will build trust in, in the seeds currency. So that's my part of my answer to or our reaction to what was said so far. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Stefan. Um, Melanie? 
I allow myself to put on a very different hat, even though, knowing I am an economist, but um, I love thought experiments. So you spoke about maybe the US dollar could beg it. Then we are going back to the social problems, which we then somehow energy buys get into our system because we beg it on a system like the US dollar. If we use Bitcoin, we take the energy consumption of Bitcoin into our system that we want to back with trust. So just a feeling, I'm not sure that this is the right way to do. And also this saying of, um, you can't fix new problems with old tools gives me that intuition that maybe backing something is not the very best solution to go forward. Having said that, I don't have a solution, but I have, a, I have another question as a thought experiment. Why do your village that now has all the money needs to keep it? Why can't that banker just send it to the other village back? Because if we are having a need-based economy, the money needs to go or the seeds need to go to that place where it's needed. And that one little village that now has all the money doesn't need it. So why do we need any backing? Why do we need any kind of system to exchange against whatever? if need-based village number two doesn't need the money. Having said that, I'm still an economist and I know what, where you want to go, but building a new kind of society, where is the problem just after that Saturday evening sending the money back to the other village? Could I respond to this apostle? Yeah, go ahead, Mark. So Melanie, I love you. That is exactly right. And so what I wanted to get to with this thought experiment was exactly that. The, um, the flow of currency is really about the aggregate need. And when there is too much in one area and there's not enough in another area, we don't need to create new currency. We need to flow it back. We need to, to circulate it around and we need to facilitate that process. So um, what I want to do uh, for um, just a couple minutes here is to um, uh, imagine what that looks like. So um, in the design of seeds, we can imagine the future where seeds is stable. Uh, I'm sorry, seeds is constant currency. So it's meeting its needs of purchasing power and seeds is, has the harvest protocol. So it's meeting its need for uh, injecting or minting new seeds into the ecosystem as new villages uh, come and adopt. This is why what the phrase that Guy said, network effect is really what this whole experiment is about. It's great to have a little village with a thousand people that use seeds and they get stable and they, and they work uh, uh, successfully in that domain. That's not what seeds is trying to do. Seeds is not trying to be a local currency in one pilot project. Seeds is about inspiring many, many, many projects so that the network effect comes. As the network effect comes, the value of seeds are, are um, more important for the world, more, more capability in the world. And we want the act of seeds to really be connected to the regenerative renaissance. That's why we're all here. Regenerative renaissance, regenerative actions on the planet. So when the network effect is coming in and you have one village and 10 villages and 100 villages and 1,000 villages, as it's growing, we as a, as a global community can allocate new seeds into projects that achieve the improvement of the thrivability of the planet. That's what our goal is. That's why we're doing this. Not to replace just one currency with a different one, whether backed by something real and solid and people can believe in or backed by something that is just by alignment and agreement. We're talking about the network effect. And so with the network effect, let's say we start with the idea where we are right now, where, where seeds was originally created. Seeds are a penny. They're two cents, they're three cents, they're five cents, they're 10 cents. 
What that is saying is that we're going to build towards the network effect by giving incentives, economic incentives to attract people to help build to this network effect. These economic incentives are kind of broadly thrown out until we get to the idea of stability. And it's a, and it's a, it's a huge leap of faith that that would happen. What I would like the Seeds Commons to really look into is how to distribute the value of that network effect directly to the goals that we want to achieve, not just randomly to investors or to people that showed up earlier this, but, but distribute the value that we're creating through this adoption, through this amazing community, that value directly moving towards the outcomes we want to achieve. And I, I have some uh, ideas that I think are really going to be effective there that I, I hope that in the transparent discussions in the Seeds Commons, we can really find uh, a place there. But that's what it is to me, is the network effect is creating value. As a community, we want that value to achieve something specific. And we don't want to depend upon the randomness of early investors or uh, crypto central exchange or this or that uh, to get us to where we're going. We need to be more intentional. Um, thank you. Uh, I'll give it back to you, Apostle. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I love what you just said. Uh, thank you, my facilitator, for off a little bit. I love what you just said. And I love that you br you're bringing up the point of regenerative actions because uh, I kind of lost it for the past couple of months, that thread of conversation. And I love that you're bringing it back. I was actually uh, explaining to someone how should seeds work once it's go live, like two or three weeks ago, I was explaining to them and I was telling them how like the, the usual cryptocurrencies are the ones that when you stake or when you do proof of work, you get the new coins. And this is going to be the cryptocurrency when the new coins get into the hands of organizations that are doing good regenerative things, things that are making the planet uh, thrive into the world. And they were like, but that is a system that's going to be biased towards these organizations. And how do you manage that? he's a little bit of a crypto guy and i was like yes that's the point if everything works and the system is biased towards these organizations and they get empowered that is what we're trying to do basically so yeah yeah um i'm putting my facilitator hat on and passing it on to miguel go miguel Thank you, Apostle, and uh, thank you, everybody else who is sharing. I completely believe in the network effect that was mentioned. I also completely follow what Melanie was uh, mentioning about bringing in the energy from the fiat system or from Bitcoin. Um, my experience on the ground is simply the following. Like, I'm able to bring people, new people in. Yeah, and that's usually simple people like uh, producers or people who offer services or uh, people who are uh, getting interested in the crypto space. And then when they then f uh, see that actually right now in this situation where we are, they cannot really use seeds for their daily needs, then they, they, then they start hesitating very much and, and and again i feel them withdrawing and this is something where i do not know if we if it's really possible there i have strong doubts uh, in my head that uh, just by inviting everybody to such a far out experiment on trial on collective trust that this is enough for those people who do have uh, like uh, not the most easy situation they do not have big bank accounts they need to see that whatever money comes in helps them to cover their their basic needs and to keep their businesses running. And there is the, the, the thing where, where I feel like we need to come up with really something that is, uh, yeah, that is just very solid and based uh, in the in the real life situation. So this is uh, where, where I am right now and seeing and that's why I, 
uh, I was proposing maybe Bitcoin could put, uh, be a solution. I could also speak about the whole energy consumption. There are many aspects to it, but this is not for now. And uh, yeah, so if somebody can come up with, with a solution to that fact, like we want to bring in many people, producers and uh, more simple people, not the rich investors, but how, how can we make sure that they uh, can uh, go on with their lives if they uh, implement seeds in their uh, uh, in their daily routine so that's my question and then uh, if i have a real answer to that 100 percent for it and if that can be done without bitcoin and fiat 100 percent for it i will be with all my energy behind it so thank you thank you miguel this is actually a super important question and i celebrate you for bringing it up uh we have just a couple of minutes till the end of the session and I want to just uh, invite to for, for invite us to answer this question next week to start with it maybe, and get get a little bit deeper into it. Uh, Stevan. Yeah, the question that uh, was raised by Melanie is important. Um, so we are bucking with seeds, the inherent deeply. Uh, embedded within the DA, DNA of money, the idea of scarcity. The idea of scarcity is built into all ideas for fiat currencies around the world. Um, but we're building seeds that's based upon this idea of abundance. We don't have currency built on the, uh, the idea of abundance. That's really an important factor in understanding what we're building. Here is here is, I don't know if any of you have ever seen one of these. This is uh, pieces of eight. It's from buried treasure from the Spanish conquistadores who uh, took silver from South America and made it into money. Here, here's our, the most popular currency in the world, the $100 US bill. And what does it say right on it? It says it's a note. It's just a promissory note. That's all it is. There's there's no other value in this piece of paper other than you trusting that you can do something with it. So we are changing the whole mental, psychological mindset behind what is money. It's a very, very big thing. <clears throat> We're not going to do it in one year, two years, or maybe five or even maybe 10 years. But it's an it's a, a enterprise really worth establishing. And we have to do it if we're going to establish a sustainable system on this planet. We simply have to win this battle. So when you look at what we're building as abundance, a currency based on abundance, <clears throat> that means when people need uh, the currency, it's there to spend on their needs of their families, et cetera. It's not something scarce that you hoard. It's something that you use and exchange. And really money ultimately comes down to an exchange of energy. It controls every one of us. Our energy is controlled by this exchange of paper around. And we, we work for it. We make our career decisions about it. We do all this because it's commanding and controlling our energy. So if you, if you create a currency <clears throat> that commands and controls your energy in an abundant and earth-friendly and equitable way, that's a huge revolution of human activity. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you. Julio? Hey, can you hear me? Oh, it's better. Yeah, it's better. Okay. Yeah, so the what I what I wanted to say is uh, that the harvest is the key for this network effect, you know, because the harvest will be issuing new seeds to the community in village B, where we didn't have a landslide, or, or so, or, or to village A, where there was the, the landslide. So everyone is going to be receiving new seeds, and the more people joining seeds, the more seeds will be generated as well. So even even though, uh, so so this will be kind of correcting the flow of seeds, uh, and then if uh, one of the banks accumulated too much seeds that could be uh, uh, given back, like bur bur burned, the seeds could be burned back in, in maybe in taxes, I mean, not taxes, but in, in network fees that we could 
uh, also provide on the game guide that's already the mention of services that can be provided. So even maybe these liquidity providers will have uh, ways to advertise their products and, and pay, you know. So so what I mean is the seeds harvest is the tool for us to provide this this liquidity. Uh, so so we don't have to be doing this manually of sorts. I mean we. The, the manual version is actually the voting that the citizens will be doing on, on sharing the new seeds that uh, are generated by the harvest to be given to new projects or new regions or new organizations. So it, it's already there. So that's why I think it's so much important to turn on the harvest. So that will provide a lot of trust. When, when every, every day I join, I open my seeds at wallet and I see new seeds popping up and say, Hey, this thing is real. I'm, I'm getting, you know, more more seeds. So, uh, and if I if I have means to fulfill my basic needs with that seeds, then the cycle closes. The, the loop closes. I just wanted to to bring that into perspective because I really think the harvest and the harvest can scale as well, right? So if we start with ten thousand users, and then uh, probably the the basic income will be very small, but if we get to a hundred thousand or even more. So more users coming will make the, the, the basic income uh, more significant. So it will also be another incentive to bring more people into seeds. So I think that is the, the beauty of, of uh, turning on har the harvest in a very, uh, in a set date in the future. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah, um, thank you, Julio. Uh, yeah, while you we were talking, I was thinking how at the second village when there are less seeds, uh, but they are all backed by the U.S. Uh, does the uh, because there are less seeds, does the actual value of the seeds become bigger because there is a lower amount of them that are backed uh, by the same amount of U.S. dollars? That's an interesting question that we can get into our next uh, call. So stay tuned everyone thanks everyone for participating and we'll probably do it next friday uh it's the 26th uh i will make the announcement at the appropriate channels thanks everyone for being here and see you soon thanks apostle <laughs>